Yeah. Might I trouble you for some tea, sir? I will share with you. No, I'm not going to drink out of that. It's chemical equipment. Uh, last lecture in the unit. Woo! We're going to use some mole-mole ratios yep. to predict the outcomes of a chemical reaction. Yeah, mole-to-mole ratios is one of the steps we really need to get right. They look like fractions, so you're going to freak out. But don't. But don't. And this is something we need to balance our chemical equation first for. And then we use the balance equation to do what we're about to show you. So to figure out how much material you need to, to create or how much new material we're going to use. Using. So I can make any fraction using any of the coefficients. <laughs> Correct. The only thing I need to make sure is the coefficient I use, I pick, I keep that molecule with it. Mm -hmm. That's really all the, that's all the rules. We're going to show you, it's more dimensional analysis, let really? the units be your guide. It's just we're going to use the balance equation to create the conversion factor and then utilize it. Right. So here's an example. Basic mole ratio. Bal it's balanced, right? Yep. Two and six, two and six. Oh, two and six. Yep, done. Yeah. Balanced. balanced chemical re reaction. I can make all sorts of mole to mole ratios based on this. Mm -hmm. So I could say for every one nitrogen, I'm going to make two ammonias. Yep, and that's, that's the ratio. That's the conversion factor that he wrote in there. And where did I get the one from in front of the N2? Uh, he implied it because there's no number written. In front of the N2. N2. So we use that balanced chemical equation. One other one you could do is a 3H2 over 2NH3. So meaning like for every three hydrogen gas, H2 gases you use, you'll produce 2NH3. Correct. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm keeping the one with the N2 and the three with the H2 and the two with the NH3, I can pick any two and put them together and it's a ratio. And you can flip them upside down. You can rearrange them. Like you are making ratios out of the mole coefficients in a equation right and then here's the next the last piece of the whole unit limiting reactants right so it is in there yes. right it is in there so yes. limiting reactant is like what you run out of first yeah so if you're making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and you go to bj's you get the big old tub of peanut butter and a big old jar of jelly and one little loaf of wonder bread you're gonna run out of wonder bread before you run right. out of the so other you can things. only make that many sandwiches and then that reaction stops you'll have all the peanut butter and jelly left over but you will not have any more peanut uh, bread right so this is a two-step problem you got to run the stoic twice and run the stoic means transfer from grams to moles and then mole to mole ratio right and we're done okay you have to run both reactants to a common product in grams and the smaller of the answers will reveal the limiting reagent these are very rare but we'll try and show you an example, okay? okay. Yeah. We are going to use a mole-to-mole -mole ratio to show the prediction of a synthesis of ammonia. So let's see what yeah. equation we got. Uh, I didn't put it. Oh, man, really? I think so. Ah. I to, nope. Yep. So you have. we're going to actually make it so we go backwards. Earlier we had to write the words from the equation. So he's Mr. Monaco's got the skills. He can write the equation from the words and balance it himself so bam he just did it and he did it quick i couldn't even finish saying it, Boom. it done so that's a balanced equation it was a beginning in the video i'm gonna, but make, we're gonna use I'm gonna that. synthesize ammonia mm -hmm. from H2 my reactants H2. it's weird it worded funny but that's actual lingo but now here's the trick if i start with five moles of hydrogen and three moles of nitrogen which one will be the limiting reactant so what i need to do is start with five moles of hydrogen and run through and then do it again with the moles of nitrogen and run through. Okay. Which will be the limiting reactant. So, right. So check it out. So this is how we do the ratio. So five mole. Start with what you're given. H2. And like we did the ratio with the uh, gram formula mass, I want moles of H2 in the denominator of this conversion factor. So for every three moles of H2 I put in, that's from the chemical equation, I get two moles of NH3. So I do five times two is 10. 10 divided by 3 is uh, 3.333. There you go. 3, 3, 3, 3, Moles 3, 3, 3. of NH3. We said earlier that we got to go from grams to grams. Well, guess what? Don't In ask. this case, we can go from moles to moles and be done. We can give you a problem where you have to go from grams. So now, that was the 5 moles of H2. Now, now we're going to do, do for the 3 moles of N2 facts. So 3 moles of N2. Now I need moles of N2 as the denominator of my conversion factor. The same way we did that unit dim or dimensional analysis with gram formula mass. So common product, two moles of NH3, but this time it's only going to be one mole of N2 because that's what is in my balanced chemical equation. We use the ratio 
that we just talked about at the beginning of the lecture. So now it's six moles of NH3. So what this is really saying is, is if I start with five moles of hydrogen based on this chemical equation, I can make three moles of NH3. And if I have three moles of N2, I can make six moles of NH3. And but which one's less? Which one would I run out of first? I would run out of the hydrogen, hydrogen first. So even if there was three moles of N2 available, you can't make six moles of NH3 because I ain't got enough hydrogen to make six moles. Because you didn't have as much hydrogen. Exactly. So in this case, the hydrogen's the bread. It's the stuff I would run out of because once we got to that three moles of NH3, there'd still be N2 left to keep going, but we'd be out of the H2 reaction would stop. So circle them up. I want to clarify one more thing. Yeah. These conversion factors that I made here, yes, I created from, from, from the recipe. The ratio. Notice. The two goes with the ammonia both times because there's two in front of the ammonia in the equation. Mm -hmm. He chose H2 as the denominator because the first the given first reaction, the first given was H2. And I was and letting my units be my guy. Yeah. And what is the coefficient for H2 in the chemical equation? Three. Three. So that's where I get. So the real number was these two and the three. That two, that three came in here. Yep. And then we that did two, two and a one. And that one came in here. That's how I created my conversion. So we just used what we learned at the first part. You have another lecture. example to do? I think we have one more. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's so we see. get rid of that. we got to make an equation. Okay, make an equation and balance it. says it. decomposition of water into hydrogen and oxygen. So I know I'm going to start with one thing and break it down into two. And then let's balance. He's going to need a two in front of water, I think. And then O is an O2. There you go. Now we good. And now we're, there's our balanced chemical equation. But let's get the problem. Here's if the problem. you start with three moles of H2O, how many moles of H2 and O2 will be made? All right, so let's let's start and just go. We got three moles of H2O to start with every time. I'm going to need moles of H2 in the denominator of my conversion factor to get rid of it. So that's the two moles of H2 from the balanced chemical equation. And let's go into H2 first, so it's two to two. Okay, hold on a second. Two mole. H2. H2. Over two moles. Two mole. H2O. H2O. I, I do got that these specifically so the moles of the H2 here. I correct. got these from those two. Yes, yes, yes. So now moles cancels. I have three times two divided by two equals three. So in that case, I can make three moles of H2. Notice H2 is the only, moles of H2 is the only unit I have left. I've crossed the other ones out. And we'll do the same thing going into oxygen this time. So problem says three moles of water. Different conversion factor, though, this time because my coefficient on O2 is different. I have one mole of O2 for every two moles of water that I make, for, that I use. So that is going to be three times one divided by two. Three divided by two is a 1 of 0.5 moles of O2. So... The limiting reaction, well, there wouldn't be in a limiting reaction in this case. It's just that if you take three moles of H2O, it would be broken down into three moles of H2 mm -hmm. and one and a half moles of O2. Right. And then so when you get a little bit better at this, I could change the problem to say, well, what if I had four moles of water? And you'd say, whoa, in the, in the equation, I got two moles of water. So to get to two to four, I double. And then you could just double your products. So once you get good at this, you can you you might find that some of them have some easy make some easy yeah. logical sense. But that's something like this that isn't really a limiting reagent. You use the mole to mole ratio to double or triple a reaction, or cut it in half, or figure out how much product is produced when this much reactant is consumed. Yeah. To put it in the technical terms. Yeah. So I'm just gonna make sure we're done. Sweet, and then. We'll we can just kind of wrap this up. So the unit is all about complete. moles in stoichiometry. The yeah. hardest part is personally, I think, this mole to mole ratio, wrapping your head around how mm. exactly you set up the conversion factors. Yeah. yeah. I think that if you have trouble balancing equations, that's okay. And my, my experience has been the unit conversion mm -hmm. in the dimensional analysis. Grams piece. to moles, moles grams to grams. To moles, moles to grams screws people up. So if you guys find out that you, you know maybe need more practice on a particular subject, just come to one of us. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get you more practice. So don't can, sit there quietly grinding yeah. your teeth going, oh my gosh, this isn't for yeah. No fraction freakouts. We We're don't think that these lectures the are the be all end all. No, you got to get the work done. You got to get the work done. And that's why you have access to us. Yeah. Don't, don't practice, practice till you get it right. We practice until we can't get, get it wrong. wrong. <laughs> See you next unit.
Click up this button and I turn it off.